over 1,000 days. That's how long I've been working as a cloud engineer. And during that time, I've worked in various cloud roles. I've worked for some great companies. I've interviewed many other popular cloud professionals. I even recently became an AWS advocate as an AWS community builder. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing all the big lessons that I've learned from working in this industry. All of the lessons, no holding back. If you're currently working in the cloud industry or another area of the tech industry, but you use cloud technology, or even if you're an aspiring cloud professional and stick around for this video. The first lesson I'll mention is something I found out quite quickly after starting my career in the cloud space. And that is the fact that there are so many different roles in cloud computing. As I mentioned before, I started my journey working in cloud administration. I was an Azure administrator to be more specific. I then moved on to working in cloud security and I'm still currently working in a cloud security focused role. But that being said, there are many more roles in cloud. So if you're working in the cloud space, you could be working in DevOps, you could be focused on cloud security, you could be focused on just cloud infrastructure or even a cloud support engineer role. All of these roles differ in their own ways and there is no one thing that a cloud engineer does. A cloud engineer could be operating and working in the cloud space in any of these different ways and working in any of these different roles. The second thing is that you cannot just learn cloud. It is a reality that hit me very early. The cloud itself involves so many other bits of technology. It involves networking, it involves coding, it involves DevOps, it involves AI and machine learning. And so if you're a professional working in this space, knowing how to operate the cloud portal or knowing about AWS, knowing about Azure is not enough to work in the industry. There's a lot of other bits you need to know depending on the role you're working in. Now I noticed this early in my journey. Luckily I had a good foundation with the CompTIA A+, so I knew a bit of networking, I knew how to troubleshoot, and I then developed the skills further. Now there are various skills to learn depending on the role someone's working in, but it was a big lesson to find out that within cloud, there are so so many other bits of technology and knowing the portal or knowing how to use the cloud provider is not enough to be a successful engineer in that space. Number three, the platform changes weekly. If I think back to when I started using Azure, the first time I logged into the Azure portal, and then I think now, so much has changed. Things get updated, new technology is introduced, and this is a continuous cycle. So if you're working in cloud, you'll quickly realize that things change so fast and you'll keep having to learn new technology that's being released by Microsoft or AWS or whatever provider you're using. And the learning just won't stop for you. So you have to keep up to date with the updates that are going on with the name changes of services or with the new services that are being introduced. Number four, this lesson is the fact that getting a job in cloud or getting a job in tech in general takes a lot of strategy. It's not just about throwing out applications. It's not only about having a good CV. It's also about the strategy you're using to apply for roles and the tips and tricks you're using to defeat the job market. Through my journey and my applications, all of the job searches that I've gone through and failed in and the times that I've been successful, I learned so much and put this course together, giving actual strategies to help you land that job. A lot of the tips in the course I gained from speaking to professionals professionals on my podcast, the Tech Certified Podcast, where I learned so much about tackling the job search. Everyone knows that the job market is up and down, can be really hard to tackle, and that's what the Tech Job Blueprint is here to help you with. So check it out, there'll be a link below. Number five, certifications are important but not everything. The common debate about certifications has gone on for a while. Some people said don't get certifications. Others have said go get your certifications. There are companies out there that require you to have certifications to even consider you for the job. And there are others who don't really care about certifications and are more focused on the skills and the work you can display and what you've done in the past. So this debate is kind of invalid. It really depends on the company. That being said, a lot of the people online and on the internet that tell you not to get certifications if you look at their profile, they probably have several certifications. <laughs> now I have learned that certifications are important and I do like to get them. I haven't been getting them to boost up my profile and expecting to get more money with more certifications, but I have used it as a learning path for my journey. So I have done a lot of them and some of them have just been for this YouTube channel and to help other people and give them tips on the resources to use to pass certifications. Others have been for my actual journey. But the point is that certs are great, but they are not everything. Number six, this point is about automation. Automation is huge in the cloud. And so understanding automation tools like Terraform and PowerShell is super important. And at some point in your career as a cloud professional, you will need to learn how to use these commands and tools to automate deployments. Infrastructure as code is important for any professional 
professionals working in this industry. And that's something I've certainly learned as I've gone on in my journey. Seven, the cloud industry is competitive. When it comes to breaking into cloud, getting the first or the next job in the cloud space, you'll find that the industry is quite competitive. There are more people interested in the cloud than there were three years ago, and there are more people learning those cloud skills and trying to get into the space. And this really dawned on me in my most recent job search. I was looking for cloud and cloud security roles, and generally the bar for those cloud roles was quite high. I had one or two interviews, and it seemed as though I just wasn't good enough for those roles. Despite having worked in the space for a while, I was aiming to go into a slightly different space where I didn't have the exact experience, but still had a lot of experience with Microsoft Azure and that sort of thing. And when they laid out the requirements, what they really wanted from me, the technology they needed me to have worked on and had understood to be able to work in the role, it was clear that there was quite a high bar to get into that role. And before the end of the interview, I already thought to myself, there's no way I'm getting this job. <laughs> If you're an aspiring professional, do not focus on the competitiveness of the industry, but focus on the skills that you're going after and making sure that you are in a good position to get those roles. And it leads perfectly into the next point, number eight, and that is that many tech roles use the cloud. It's not just cloud engineers, like cloud security engineers, cloud infrastructure engineer. No, there are many different roles who use the cloud. Software engineers deploy their code through the cloud. IT support engineers often use, often use Microsoft Azure or AWS for specific cloud operations. And this is kind of great news for a lot of people because it means even if you're not in a cloud role, you can still get experience in the cloud space and use that experience to then go on and get a cloud role. Leveraging the little parts that you can learn in your role to move on and specialize in that area. Number nine, and this is a big one, the fact that cloud computing is enabling AI. AI tools and technology needs the cloud to operate. Think about ChatGPT, think about all of the new AI apps, AI startups, they're all using cloud technology in some way. The fact that cloud and AI are working so closely together will mean that cloud computing will be more in demand as the demand for AI grows. This is good news for those who specialize in cloud because cloud engineers and professionals will continue to be in demand as the years go on. Number 10, and this is slightly a different point. Mentors are really helpful, but the information is out there. And mentorship is definitely great, having someone show you how to go about and navigate the industry. But I think the point I'm trying to make here, don't lose hope if you're unable to find someone who can mentor you because the information is out there. And if you can find that information, you can find your way without specific guidance for someone. I definitely had a mentor when I was starting my journey, but after my first role in this space, I started to do this cloud journey kind of on my own. Even if you have a mentor, nobody is going to sit down and tell you and remind you every day what you need to be doing to succeed in your role. They might give you that extra push, they might give you that bit of advice that you didn't know before, but you still have to go after the information, the training, and the learning yourself. So if you don't have anyone mentoring you, the information is out there, you will do what you can to find it. Number 11, content creators are helpful, but do your own research as well. And this applies for me also. I've seen so many messages of people saying I got the job based on your advice, or people saying you inspired me to pursue a career in cloud computing or cybersecurity. But the point I'm trying to make here is not to live and die off of what a creator said online. We have our own opinions, we have our own journeys, and we're sharing those journeys to you. I've seen other content creators online who have had varying opinions from me, like completely different. And maybe they've been right, or maybe I've been right. I think along my journey, there have been people online and course instructors who've been really helpful. And there have been some things I've heard that have caused a little bit of panic. Despite people online and creators being really helpful for you, I wanna advise you to do your own research as well. And that includes me. Number 12, the learning never ends. If you reach the point where you've stopped learning, you've stopped doing courses, you're not doing any certifications, you're just coasting, then you're not in a good position. Tech moves fast, the industry keeps moving, and so you need to keep learning. That's just the nature of this industry and you need to make sure you're following that pathway. If you are, you'll have a great career, if you're not, that's not a good thing. Us cloud professionals have to keep learning so we don't get left behind. Complacency comes when the learning stops. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of just learning something once and improving that one thing over a couple of years. We just don't. You're gonna come across a project soon where you're working on something that you've never heard of or worked on before. And unfortunately, you'll have to think on your feet. You'll have to learn quickly. Maybe you'll have to do a short course online about this thing. You'll have to pick it up in a short space of time. And that is the cycle of working in in cloud and I guess working in tech in general. So keep the learning going. 
Another thing I'll say is that my journey has been up and down. A lot of the points I've mentioned so far in this video have come from either side. It's either been something I've done that has really helped me on my journey, or it's been something I've completely failed at and have learned that that is not the way to do things. Whichever of those it is, these are the different things that have really helped me on my journey in cloud computing. And if you're a beginner in the cloud space and are looking to start your journey in cloud, then check out one of these two videos.